Deuce and Mo. We definitely can't hear Damien, but we can hear you, right? Yeah. I got you, I got Kenny. you, Kenny. Yeah. I, I didn't hear Dam I, now I can't hear Damien. Oh, Damien's That's just crazy. saying do, do do this bit so, without him. Oh, oh, he oh no. Damien, it, 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 this is for all my YouTube and Twitch people. Poor Damien. I don't know what's happening. The world is working against him with his internet and everything. Can you what, now we have you a little bit. You're a little underwater, but we have you a little bit. Keep going. I'll figure no, it out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, Damien. 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 <laughs> Damien leaves and you sounding perfect. I'm, we're good? There yeah. you go. We're good. Hey, it's our first day. Let's Yay. go. Jeez. Give me a hell yeah. You know oh, what it is? We, 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 wiser. We, we spend all our money to get Deuce and Mo on the show, and we don't have we don't have the money to to cover the tech fees for this whole setup anymore. It's expensive. Like, are you are you on like that Kenny internet now? The old school Kenny oh, internet? Like oh, the, uh, the the mom singing uh, good night to the kids. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Don't we're know. here. It worked now. It sounds great. That's all that matters. We're yep. live and we're good to go. Let's do That's it. All it is, man. Maybe Monty's listening and he's coming for my internet. Maybe that's what Monty McNair is doing is he's coming for the internet. So, by the way, can I just point this out? As because we're big into self-deprecating humor and just pointing out yeah. when things go wrong. Mm. I thought, Morgan, you had a rejoiner in the pregame show that I thought was fantastic. Wait. You said the Kings transition offense is as clunky as my transition to commercial break a minute ago cool. so you're oh, right it nice. was po it was post game and i had an okay. awful transition out to the commercial break and so i said and we were coming oh no it was halftime and we were saying uh we were going to talk about the king's transition defense and i was like the king's transition defense just as bad as my last transition out to break i knew you would have oh, that news. and i, I just want that was, oh. i thought that was such a great line because it there was that one, there was nothing wrong with your transition to commercial. But I get self dep I get the need. We do it. Every Shoot, we got a whole we got a whole drop for when things go bad. No, it's live, pal. Like this this whole transition into Deuce and Mo being with us went bad. We just point that stuff out. And I thought because you delivered it in such a great way, and I almost text you, but I didn't want it to get lost in text. So I was like, I'm just gonna tell her that was a great transition. Now I got to go back and watch what she messed up because now I'm like, I got we got to coach that out. We oh. got to we got to clean oh. that mess up. All That's right, coach, we'll get that we one out of there. Coach Deuce always starts the Man. post game. Uh, um, you know, meeting with what she did wrong first. Yeah, like, that was absolutely not force ass. what she did wrong first. Let's let's cover that one. And so yeah. to be clear, you had to call the game deuce by yourself yesterday. Yeah, it was a exhilarating Stockton Kings <laughs> Birmingham squadron game where the squadron oh were missing 70 <laughs> points from their starting lineup and that one point missed 11 straight shots. And I'm just like, man, this is this is great stuff. Oh, they're playing man. guys that I have literally man. I did like no homework on. Uh, you know, you know, there's certain guys at the end of the bench. You're like, okay, there's not a lot of information on these guys. It's the G League. I've got a couple of notes, but it's okay. Yeah. They played two minutes this season, and they're playing <laughs> 37 minutes last night. <laughs> wow. Who is Birmingham team? Is that New Orleans? Yeah, it's the Pelicans. Yeah. Goodness gracious. We, we have to actually call that game again tonight. Yeah. We're going to Stockton in a couple hours to go oh, call that man. game. So. I need Hardest working duo in the game, game right here. Same to you two, man. Come on now. Official mm. introductions, Deuce Mason, Morgan Reagan, televisions, uh, Deuce and Mo podcast, Deuce and Mo, and of course, uh, the broadcasters for the Stockton Kings. Uh, let's They're talk about the, never there. Yeah, let's talk <laughs> about the Sacramento Kings. Uh, how would you summarize this team's problems? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. It's the same stuff we talked about all year. I mean, I I missed the game last night, so I I you know the first thing I did this morning after getting you know great rest, I'm like, let me turn on some Kings Hawks, and I mean it was just so bad. I mean, you know, it's one thing to miss shots. I thought the offense looked bad in the first half, not only for missing shots, but just you know no passing, no movement, but defensively, like the breakdowns. I mean, Bagley. It's just like every time you see like these glimpses that oh maybe he's turned the corner. You see how he plays defensively yesterday, and you're like, what is happening? And mm. so they, they don't seem to know how to communicate. They don't seem to know when to switch, when not to switch, coverages. 
It's just a train wreck. Yeah, you guys, that game last night, I don't know why that was like my breaking point, but it broke me. Like it broke me. And I think that like when you look before the game at the injury report and you see another shorthanded team come in and the Kings just can't get things done, but it's how they don't get things done, right? They have those uh, glimpses where it's like, wow, De'Aaron Fox taking over and uh, Tyrese Halliburton looks like a stud. And then you see those defensive moments and it is so draining, so deflating where it just makes you hopeless for the rest of the season. Well, I mean, Kevin Herter last night, like I, I like Kevin Herter, but come on. I mean, Kevin Herter looked like it was KD out there. Like, what? <laughs> what are we watching? And boy, Kevin Herter got a bag, though. He does. Have oh a... no, he does. He yeah, does. He does. And yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if the Kings didn't realize that. Like, I don't know if the That's players were like, "What's though?" What it seems like. They're yeah, like, oh, like where's this guy? He yeah, cooked the Eastern Conference Finals last year. He cooked Buddy Heald last night. It was ugly. You know the the thing about this team that is also kind of baffling is. They have individuals who have done better, like with IQ and, and understanding of the game on other teams. Like you look at somebody like Mo Harkless. I was talking about the – it wasn't the game-winning bucket, but after Halliburton hit a three, mm. um, Cam yeah. Reddick hit a three. And he played way too far off. It, it, I mean, it was a, a, a triple team for no reason in the middle of the key, leaving a wide-open Reddish. And he knows better than that. But these are the breakdowns that you guys just talked about that we see on a regular basis. And I know that Mo understands the game. He's played with some of the best defensive minds in the league today. He knows better. But when they get here, I don't know what happens. It just kind of all goes out the window. And that's what makes it even more frustrating. Yeah, it's, I think the, it's just the same topics that we've hit on this season, the last thing. year, the year before. The brand Deuces, De Deuces De Aaron Fox. You want me to say it again? <laughs> I mean, it's just like what all, the offensive rebounds. I know it wasn't as big of an issue last night, but it's just it's exhausting. And you know, we haven't seen a trade since March 25th. And mm. I think if I would have told you that on March 25th we would not see a trade the rest of the calendar year, I think we would have laughed at that. So mm. this next month, man, is it's going to be really interesting to see what their approach is to shake this up because it, it needs it a needs to change. Up. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, let's let's go there. Do uh, uh, do some more. I know you guys were talking about that a, a little bit on the the very rare morning chat uh, this morning. Um, why do you think it's so quiet? You know, for me personally, I I keep trying to dissect everything and then I speculate and I'm like, ah, don't go down that rabbit hole, but I do it anyway. And I look at what other teams have to offer for Ben Simmons or whoever else is available and out there. You look at this broken Celtics team and they have Jalen Brown. Are they shopping? And then you look at Portland and is it CJ McCollum? And these pieces are just so valuable, right? They're, they're, they're these all-star caliber players. And then you have the Kings who I feel like all these other teams can bully the Kings and go, uh, uh, we ain't doing anything unless you give us Tyrese Halliburton. And then because they know they have better choices out there and they can use that leverage on the Kings. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I know Monty's tried to get some stuff done. We've seen it, but mm -hmm. you don't get credit for almost trades either. So yeah. It, it, it's tough because I'm also like, hey, don't just make a trade because we're all going, hey, make a trade. Like, obviously, make the right one. Um, And I, I just want to see something. I've seen enough of this group. Like, well, this has been a couple of years now, three years with, like, Barnes and Heald and Fox. There are pieces I like. Like, I still like – I'm not, like, on that, hey, they got to trade Fox thing. Like, dude, Fox is a really good player. He's still 24 years old. He's got shortcomings. But last night – I thought he was offensive. I mean, he's been great. I mean, the last couple of games, I thought last night he had that move on reddish late for that and one that was, that was just nasty. beautiful. It was, yeah, it was disgusting. Um, and Halliburton played well last night, so that was a good sign. But like the Kings are in such a tough spot because how how do you how do you get better? You know, like say you want to keep Fox and Halliburton. All right, what what are your pieces that are still super attractive around yeah. the league? I think Barnes definitely has some value to teams, yeah. but like, mm -hmm. what are you getting back? Buddy Healed. I don't know. I mean, he's 
I feel like he's been campaigning to go to the Lakers since that trade fell apart. You know, he's shaking hands with Jeannie Butt. Like, what? Oh, man. LeBron James is talking smack to the Kings bench. And I was waiting for Buddy to get up and dap him. Like, yeah, I'm with you. I'm like, no, you're on the Kings still. You're, you're still on the Kings. So, I, I don't know. I, I want something to go down. You know, they're, 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 watching Cam Reddish last night, you hear that the Hawks may want to move on from him. I mean, that's a, someone I look at. And, you know... I, I know that's not the big splash, but that's someone you take a chance on because he's 22 years old. He fits a serious need for this team. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Yeah, would you do I, it? It, it? Sorry, Casey. Would would you do it for Cam Reddish if it included Harrison Barnes? Fox and HB? No, no. Har Harrison and for 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 uh, Cam Reddish. Oh, I mean, and yeah. You probably got to Gallinari back. Yeah, and for me, yes, only and I love Harrison. I just think you look at this core and it's like you need that that change up, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. and maybe Cam Reddish can add something else with his size and his youth and all of that can come together to be that change up. I, I don't sure. know exactly, but yes, that would be one of the tweaks I would make. Yeah, I, I'm I'm down with that. And Gallinari's deal, if I'm not mistaken, is a partial guarantee. Correct. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't kill you on that. So yeah, like that's the type of move. You know, Cam Reddish is someone, now obviously you would have to figure out long-term signing him to a, a bigger deal if you wanted to go that route. But you, you see that he's got the tools to be a pretty good player. And mm -hmm. those are the guys you take chances on. You know, if if somehow you got him and you got Miles Turner. Okay, Miles Turner's 25 years old. He could block shots. He could step out and hit a three. Th that's more intriguing to me and maybe and maybe keep that fox halliburton you got miles turner you got reddish is, is there something there they're still kind of young that, that i have a little more i don't know confidence in that than what i've obviously been seeing the last couple of years the you, you mentioned something earlier where you talked about you know you, you're not really trying to make a move just to make a move i am <laughs> okay because like you guys mentioned like we've been talking about for weeks now. I know what this group is. I know I know there's nothing that's going to happen here. And Damien, I understood what he was saying, but as I thought about it a little more, I was like, I, I don't even know if this is a reality. He said earlier, he's like, I don't want to make a bad deal. You know, I understand that. What's a bad deal? <laughs> um, well, when it comes to like Buddy Hill and Marvin Bagley, uh -huh. I don't think there's any, I don't think there is a bad deal. I think you move on from them and you change up what's going on. I don't my, think deal. my only thing, Kenny, is that I still, I believe the reason why there could be a bad deal with that is because Marvin Bagley, there's still that, that young unseen athleticism potential from other teams that might be intriguing. And then Buddy Heald is supposedly that elite shooter that is inconsistent, but can maybe help a contending team be in that spot up shooter. Right? So I mm -hmm. think there's, value to these guys to certain squads and that's where i go can you get some of that value back and not just make a move to make a move to make a tweak that's mm -hmm. i guess where i'm mm -hmm. kind of at with those i guess guys. my point with that too is like i don't want to get to the trade deadline big like, hey man the kings traded uh tristan thompson for um name it joe Peyton pritchard you know name a random player and that Peyton pritchard is a bad example i don't know why he went to yeah that. but you know what i mean like i don't need like these like, hey. back to the cell yeah right yeah <laughs> i don't need to trade like i don't need these like minor tweaks right yeah. like i don't need yeah. you know like i need something that has a little substance whether you're going with hey we're gonna bet on this a 22 year old in cam reddish we think he could be a player here or going mm. for something bigger i don't need like a subtle tweak that's a move to just to make a move to me yeah. Um, yeah, they can do that though. They can make a move just to make. Cause I'm sick of seeing this. Yeah. Like this, I know what this is going to result in every single. Night. Was there? We joke about it. Everybody kind of jokes about it. Serious. We're dead serious. You're like, yo, this is a a deathly uh, tough game tonight with Trey Young out and all these guys out. Cause this is what this is what this group does. This, there was not a lot of people. They're frustrated. They're upset. They're kind of sick of it. There aren't a lot of people who are surprised by what happened last night. Well, no, because I mean the Mavs shorthanded beat them by like twenty at home. Remember they went to the, the right Charlotte. Time. Charlotte was missing like eight Everyone. of their guys, ten of their guys. They played Hugo, their mascot, and the the Hornets <laughs> still won. Like this Hugo's is a problem. <laughs> you no, know, he he's got more he's than an MF in problem. He's got that girth. He's got yeah, that he's, girth. Oh, sure does. Um, 
Yeah. Sounds I, different when you say it. Can't lie. Oh, it's, oh, <laughs> it sounds weird when you say it. Good point. <laughs> I mean, this team is. We're, we can't be surprised anymore. Everyone, you know, sometimes we get in the caught in the, the whole like, oh man, who who is this team? Man, it's so confusing. It's not confusing. This is who they are. They are. What we're they at are. the halfway point of the season tomorrow. Game forty one. Wow. Oh That's God. this is this is who they are. Like if they shoot well on some nights, they shoot over fifty percent. They knock down a whole bunch of threes. They may squeak out a win, but if they don't shoot well, which it uh, seems like a lot this year, they haven't been shooting well. You know they're not going to D up, mm -hmm. and they're going to lose. Mm -hmm. You're listening to D-Lo and KC along with Deuce and Mo here on ESPN 1320 KIFM West Sacramento, KRX QHD2 Sacramento and Odyssey Station and driven by Lasher's Elk Grove Dodge. The only thing better than listening to us talk about a frustrating Sacramento Kings team is going to see a frustrating Sacramento Kings team in person, and we have got those tickets for you right now. It'll be the Kings versus Houston coming up on January 16th. Caller number three right now, 916-349-1320. We'll get you all set up again. That's 916-349-1320, and we will send you to see the Sacramento Kings. Is it fair to judge Monty McNair's job performance now? Yeah, I think so. I think the reason why, because we're all sitting here going, what the hell are you waiting for? Right? Like it's it, Deuce talked about the last time a trade, a tweak was made and it's like, we've seen enough. So what are you waiting for now? I think sometimes we put that on somebody and we realize, well, it takes two to tango. You know, he, he can't force another team to just make a trade with him either. And but exactly. And you're getting paid how much money to make things happen. Like it is part of your job. Where are your sales tactics? I don't know. Do what you need to do. Don't be afraid of making moves. Just freaking do it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's fair to judge because, you know, some people are like, well, you got to wait till the trade deadline to judge him. Let's see what he does then. Well, you could still judge on inactivity as well, mm -hmm. right? Like that's, mm -hmm. that's fair to do. Um, I am eager to see what he does with this trade deadline. Because if, if nothing happens at this deadline, because remember before the season, we're like, uh, before the draft, we're like, there's no way there's not some big deal. And then the buddy thing it thought we thought was going to happen. We're all, we're, we're talking on draft day about we're all so, here. Oh my yeah. God, this is crazy. <laughs> Let's go. And then, you know, that obviously fell apart because LeBron. Yeah, and, two minutes later. Yeah. It was an um, exhilarating two minutes, though. It was mm -hmm. so exhilarating. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm I'm very eager to see what he does here because it, it's like that that story with Sam comes out, which I don't know. I didn't know what to really take from it, other than you know it's the same stuff that we've heard that Monty's going to be trying to be in on the big time names, and uh, they're looking to make the playoffs and build for sustained success. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll see what he does because this is going to tell us a lot about him. Yeah, I I don't I don't know. I I feel like Monty, you know, good guy whatever the case may be knows knows basketball but I, I don't know I don't know about this whole thing I think I feel like and this is unfair because we don't know how much of Houston you know he he was a part of or decision maker or whatever the case may be I feel like he, this is a the terrible part of the whole Daryl Morey tree right I feel like he's so stuck on value for some of these guys when you talk about buddy or Bagley that he's I'm not saying he's going to do it until the end of the seat or the, until the trade deadline, but he's almost willing to let this team rot for the the possibility that he gets maximum value yeah. for Buddy or Bagley, and that is Good point. That's, that's that's crazy. I mean, we I know me. I won't put anybody else in it. I've been saying moves need to be made the day after Luke Walton was fired. I was like that. All right, we know what some people think it was the coach. He may have played a role, but it's this group. It's this group that has good individual ball players, but together they're a train wreck. You need to break them up. This was three, four weeks ago. Yep. This was 23 games ago, and nothing has happened. And he's just letting this team ride. And that's what's frustrating to me. Like he I, I, I honestly wonder like how much it has to do with just looking at the standings and with everything that's gone wrong. They're mm -hmm. like, we're good. We're, we just, mm -hmm. hey, we make this tweak, we get better here, we can make a push and like all of a sudden be jump to the eighth seat. Like 
it's I still not we'll out the open. window. The West is not mm. that good. Yeah. In the I, bottom. And that and that's what's so weird about this situation, right? And then I think when you looked at a lot of those games before the last game or something, they were like eight and eight or it, something. I know. That was the weirdest stat is a couple games ago in their last 16 <laughs> games are eight and eight. I'm like, no, they're there's no way. And they I, I, were. They yeah. just the, the way that they're losing is so ugly that it feels like there's no way that they won any of those games. But yeah, I'm I'm with you on like not being patient and waiting for it. the most value you can get for some of these guys. Cause guess what? You're in a small market and just you're gonna rot and crumble and fall if you don't make moves. And it's not about making tweaks, it's about making dangerous moves because you guys, Ooh. yeah, Ooh. what what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Like I, I, I've yeah, I've never felt like this before. I've never felt so dark and just like at the <laughs> bottom. And that is how I feel right now. And I'm not one of those people usually each year that comes around and goes, I feel this way. So make this move because I don't want to feel this way anymore. I'm like, no, no, no. You can look in the arena when it's deflated mm -hmm. and no one's in there cheering them on on a Wednesday night oh, against the mm -hmm. Hawks. And it's like, yeah, no moves need to be made. And you know what else needs to be added is just basketball IQ you mm. talk about the personnel and like how this doesn't mesh you know to help things mesh if you just had more smart players on this squad you have Tyrese you have Davion you have someone in deer and Fox who I believe can learn and become a smarter player mm. but he's only learned how to play basketball one way and that's with the ball in his hands mm. for those that are watching it very must you know. <laughs> it very must it very much appears that the Deuce and Mo studio is haunted. Paranormal <laughs> activity. <door>. Goes. <laughs> it's the door starts opening and closing behind you. Uh, you know I know it's the pups, but it's still. Uh... Well, then it, it got funny too because it's it's like the dogs like kind of walked in there like a like a a human would. Just oh yep. yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Um, recording. Do. Let me come back out. Like yeah. you're a dog. What's going yeah. on? They, they walked in they like. Do. Y'all talking yeah. about the Kings again, huh? I'm out. Yeah. I'm leaving. Yeah. They're like, uh, okay, I'm sick of this same old story. Bye. I'm just making sure Bojack didn't roll in with like a bird or so. The other day he rolls in with a bird in his mouth. I'm like, oh man. I, <laughs> that's a scary situation. Wait I don't know. Like, it was and, dead, but like, I, it was just like, what? I don't play around with that. I, I don't know what it is about dead animals. I'm always afraid they're going to come back alive. Uh, I've been yeah. there. Not that's that much. I'm just saying I have the same feelings. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Yeah. Like in a shovel. I mean, I was I was prepared for anything. Hey, uh, uh, in, in in during her brief time in Connecticut, we had a pretty big yard with a a, a bit of wilderness behind us before another another house mm -hmm. and a young baby sprout. When I, I guess I must have been in California at the time because I wasn't home. A young baby sprout <clears throat> brought the the severed head of a rabbit. Uh, oh. to the doorstep of the uh women's oh. basketball coach at Duke University. <laughs> she, oh, I got no. a call that said, uh, you need to get home and get this rabbit head off of the yeah. patio door. That's a, that's a dog clear, sending a message. That baby a sprout sending. didn't didn't sever the, the head. It, there's Do we some, know that? <laughs> I'm confident. I'm I'm confident. There's there's some wild animals back there, but uh oh, yeah. Yo, that's yeah, was, crazy. Wild, wild times in Connecticut, indeed. I actually, uh, do. She brought up the standings. I have the same concerns that 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 you do when you when you talk about them sitting there looking like we don't need to do much. The bottom mm. of this conference is so bad, and we were doing math, which is a dangerous thing to do. Mm, be careful. But we, you know, this team could finish projectively worse than they did last year, and still wind up in the playing game here. And it winds. It, it, it's ultimately like, okay, you you got to the ten spot which is a product of a horrible Western conference. And you literally did not get any better. So what the hell are you selling to your fan base going into next year? That's why, uh, that's why a move is imperative and that move needs to propel them. So it's like, Oh man, they made a serious push here, a decent record, like above 500 finish and they finish in the eighth spot. So it feels better because you're right. Like you win 30 something games, and you get in the play-in, and then you get bounced. It's like, oh, you cool, you play an extra game. I mean, it, it goes to, like, the, the people who believe they should tank. It kind of falls in their categories. Like, well, what was the point? You guys could have just finished. You could have traded assets, finished way below that, and get a top-five pick. What was mm -hmm. the point in what you just achieved? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like you, Deuce, and, like, Mo. Um, 
what do you have to lose? <laughs> like that's where that's almost where I come from when I say there is no bad move. Like mm-hmm. I like Fox, I like Halibur, I want to stay. I want to watch them play basketball for the Kings. But if you decided to move on from him, you're probably going to end up stinking. And at the very least, you'll stink and have, you know, my man from Duke coming in next year and you'll be excited to see it. Like there is no bad move because the last I'm time he ran from Duke came to Sacramento, it didn't work out well. That's a damn good point. Hey, no, you know what needs to happen? You got to get Jabari Smith. I mean, <laughs> hey, his look, dad played here. And this guy is like one of the best players in the country. Balling. Balling. Now, be clear. I don't want to trade Fox, but what I'm talking about when you you talk about a trade, like if the trade doesn't work, like if you give up too much for a a trade and getting Cam Reddish and trade, so what? So what? Like, because it can't, I'm serious when I say it can't be any worse than this as far as watching this team, covering this team, watching them religiously every day. It can't be any worse. They could be a terrible team. And at least I know, well, they're just tanking. There's, there's a top five pick coming or something like that. Yeah, but, but you don't want to trade guys that are super talented and young for spare parts either, right? No, I don't want to trade any of the young guys. I don't want to trade Fox or Halliburton. Okay. I'm thinking like Barnes, Buddy, Bag- well, Bagley's young. I don't know how talented would you Would you put Davion ever in that mix too? Yeah, I would. I would. I would. Yeah. I don't want to. For the like, right trade for the right deal. Yeah, I absolutely. Yeah, but, but I would. Yeah. Um. And I love it. Speaking of Harrison, what? Why do you think his season is? I don't know. Gone south. Like he was really, really good to start the season, and now, you, you know, I think we did the numbers before the ankle injury. It was I think it was like sixteen points and some change per game. Since then, it's like thirteen. And Kenny was like, "If he had thirteen last night, the Kings would have won." He couldn't even get to that, and it feels like there are a lot of games where he's he's just he's not there. You guys, this happened last year after he got a little beat up and then his game went a little downhill, right? He wasn't as efficient. He wasn't that player that they, that they could really depend on. So, I mean, maybe it's the way that he plays after injury, whether he's holding back and, or just things don't work the same with him explosively, athletically, or, um, whatever it may be, but we saw this happen last year as well. And it is super frustrating because you're like, man, can't you push through that? Or can't you do this differently? Or can't you add here instead? And so I don't know exactly what the answer is. And two, I was also thinking like new father, like, you know, Harrison mm. Barnes, you, you see him when he does post some stuff, he's very hands-on. Like, is that going to be something else that has been factoring into mm. his sleep and just like what he's doing? I mean, you, we're all human. I can't imagine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're not allowed to talk about that stuff. Oh, when it sorry. Comes to basketball You're so players. right. Yeah. They, they need to only be focused on basketball. They need to pay for season. night doulas and make sure their wives are just doing everything. You're so, so right, Deuce. Do you guys think he might still be feeling effects of that foot? I kind of do. I mean, just based on the, the numbers for sure. And I just. I don't know. I know people are mixed on this, but I, I like him especially better in, with this at the three. You know, yeah. I think the Kings play so small. I mean, every team they play seems bigger. I'm watching the Hawks last night, and it's like every guy is like bigger than the Kings. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just it. it they, then they get in positions where he's at the four, and then you know he's got to come help on a big guy rolling to the basket. You know, it's it just puts him in a bad spot a lot of time. Mm. I had to look up Night Doula. Don't, <laughs> don't mind me. I didn't know what it's that what was. rich rich people can. Do that. I mean, maybe some rich, not rich people. Are they just called nannies or no? No, because a night doula is literally like the one that takes care of the baby at night when it wakes up and all those things. Where a nanny, I believe, is someone who, you know, is taking care of the kids during the day. It's different. It's, There's I, different I believe knowledge. It, 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 it also involves nursing. Yeah, oh, yes, absolutely. Whether it is with formula and or the mother's breast milk that is in the refrigerator. I did not think we were going to get this breakdown. I was about to say, you, can't, you can't get this anywhere. You Feminism. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, you guys. <laughs> and, and I know all this and I'm not having kids, by the way. How great is that? I just know all this for women and for all these parents out there. So 
There you go. Right, that pretty. was the def- like definitive. No little mo's like that. The, the, no the, little mo's. The, a dog is enough, and that's all I want. I like my career is my baby. The dog is my baby. I'm good. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. Rock with it. So no night doula in uh. No. <laughs> in <future>. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, I don't know how to transition. I don't know how to transition from night doulas to Damian Jones, but I did want to ask some questions about Damian Jones and the way that he's played and what you guys have, have thought of, of, about his play over the course of the last, you know, handful of weeks as it feels like he's been thrust into a role that maybe he didn't think he was going to have this season. Yeah. I, I like what he's brought. You know, I, I think his, his best position is, a, you know, a big guy coming off your bench, but a guy with size will dunk on you. He could finish. Mm. He moves well. There's a lot to like about Damian Jones. I, I like him a lot. You know, if he's your starting five. Yeah. It's a little guy. I don't know that, that you, you see it. I mean, he's inconsistent, right? And there's some yeah, guys yeah. that are going to give him problems, but for a role player. Yeah. I, I mean, I much rather see him in that, you know, if when Holmes gets back at some point, Jones has got to be the primary center coming off the bench. Mm-hmm. I think he's better than Len and obviously Tristan. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, tr- is obviously. Well, I mean, I, it's, it, Tristan is just, I mean, uh, the, his last few stands, I just think have been awful, you know? Um, well, I mean, it's true. I mean, I, awful I, is a little harsh, but no, I, I, I don't he, think it's been good. He just doesn't seem to move well. Yeah, um, he can't play above the rim. Like you can put him out there, and he can be that big presence. But the way that he moves laterally and can't fight over a screen, it's it's a he's a hey, liability at times. If Kenny was GM, they, he would assign him to a max contract during training camp Damn. because he, want, he, he yelled at practice. Tristan, once. I did say that. I did. <laughs> say that. I wanted another year, Tristan. Yeah. Um, we Tristan's in the box, so the 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 more Completely? he doesn't play, yeah, Tristan's in the box. Like we've kind of yeah, yeah. had it. Like he's not in the he. There's different areas of the box. It's just mm-hmm. like he's kind of hit the point where, like, and I know we, we talked about this yesterday. Most people don't really care about this type of stuff. I just find it gross. Like, what do you mm-hmm. and in in the whole Instagram story apology, like we're, Kardashian PR team mm-hmm. to the on, rescue. Man. You know it too. And yeah, Yeah, no, I, that stuff too, Damien, like I know we don't talk about it and we don't need to talk about it, but I think when they want to look at this guy as like, can he be that veteran leader? I just go, no, look at his character. Like you guys, you can't, I know sometimes we go, Oh, they're not going to worry about that. It's all about what's happening on the floor. Absolutely not that what happens off the floor also shapes you as a human on the floor. Yeah. They're not taking that guy seriously. Like if, if he's up and he's trying to preach about something, no, nobody's taking that seriously. I gotta be honest. I can't take anybody nicknamed TT seriously. Like, I, like come on, man. I ain't no. Well, first of all, I'm not calling nobody TT. No, I'm talk <laughs> I to mean, your boy Tyrese I, about that. I think you you did call him TT in uh, one of those Drake flows. Oh, yeah. oh, Drake yeah. bars. Yeah, it was after one of his games. TT, do you love me? Are we riding? Yeah. And that's only because Tyrese brought it up. I so, have. Uh, yeah. Two two notes, not necessarily Kings related. Casey, you good with that? I'm I'm absolutely 100 percent good with that because I needed to ask them non Kings related. Okay, stuff. good. We're sick of talking about the Kings. We've established that. Let's go. What do you think about Becky? Oh, going Lynch to or the- Hammond. Uh, Becky oh. Hammond. Oh, Becky, so I'm not a, I'm not a fan of Becky Lynch. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, what? Yeah. Okay, one. I love Becky Lynch. Two. Mm-hmm. I love Becky Hammond, but. You know what, Dr. Britt Baker is better, better than Becky Lynch, but that's okay. I, Go ahead. I that's tough. <laughs> D-M-D. I don't know if I agree <laughs> with that, but I all but like I love her. They're both She's really bad. good. Mm-hmm. Um, but with Becky Hammond in the Las Vegas Aces, that whole situation, great, good for her. She should be coaching, you know, head coach right now. Awesome. It's frustrating because. Again, for me as a woman, when you see someone as this pioneer that's working their butt off to get in this position and they're right there, they're right there and no one is cracking. No one is just making it happen, right? They want to make sure they give the jobs to everyone else who has experience or has been a former player in this league. I don't know why they get air quotes, but (laughs) at the same time, it's like give these people that deserve these head coaching spots a chance and she wasn't given the chance and now she's going to the WNBA which the W is amazing and she's going to kill it there but I just wanted to see her as one of those first 
women coaches, head yeah. coaches in the NBA. I mean, I thought she had mentioned that in the interview process in the NBA, they, the, the one thing that they mentioned is she didn't have head coaching experience. Yep. Which is so weird to me. That was a weird line. Right. Because you know, none, a lot of these guys haven't. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I mean, I don't know, like, I, I don't know enough about her and her coaching to say if she's going to be a great coach. Uh, and if, she's a GM there too. Yeah. Like, this is a big responsibility. I do think it's a little weird. She's staying with San Antonio. I would dip out and maybe focus on the aces, but yeah, but the path that she's paved and I mean, you know, you look at Kara, you look at so many others now that are like up there and, and have been there now they've paved those pathways for so many other women to get these opportunities. So, um, you know, thankful for her experience there. Yeah. I, I, I wish her the best. Um, while I, it would have been awesome if she got in the NBA, I, I like what that means for the w, WNBA as well. Like getting somebody like Becky Hammond in there. And I, I think that's, that's, that's dope as well. So like I said, it would have been dope if she would have been an NBA coach, but I think that's good for that league as well. Also, um, Charlotte and Bianca, uh, head and shoulders ahead of Be Becky Lynch. That, that's that. Um, yeah, I, I love wow. Bianca. Yeah. Yeah. Charlotte, the, the queen, that's my girl right there. Um, big game on Sunday. Big game on Sunday. Niners, Number I was doing. Yes. Niners, Rams. Not, not Portland and the Kings. That's not a big game. There we go. Um, if Jimmy's 80%, do you start him? <sighs> I say yes. Oh, I, I think I'm feeling that way now too. I wasn't Jim, earlier. We talked Jimmy's, to Davis and some stuff. I, I think I'm feeling that way. Mo's like, if Jimmy's 100, percent I ain't starting him. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I mean, this is like you got to win this game. You got to win this game. And Trey Lance showed some flashes in the second half, and there's a lot to like. And yeah, he's going to be the quarterback of the future. Hopefully, Jimmy's played well against the Rams. Hmm. And, okay. I mean, if he can go, well, do it. Like you, he's been the guy this year. You're gonna. You're going to bet on your season with Trey Lance in this game. That's what you want to do. You can say you can not like Jimmy G all you want, Morgan. Uh -huh. But the reality is he's played well against the Rams and he's had this experience. He's been the quarterback so this year. So has an 80% healthy Jimmy G played against the Rams this year? Well, and that's a concern, right? And I mean, Aaron Donald's going to be coming for that. But yeah. And we, you guys, we saw Jimmy G when he was coming off the knee injury fresh. And it was like, he's not planting back. He's not accepting right. fully that he is healthy enough right. to do the things that he needed to do. And he... It's it's a mental thing, right? He would baby things. And I'm not acting like he's going to baby his hand or whatever. But at the same time, that could be top of mind. So maybe just inject the guy with a whole bunch of cortisone and not let him think about anything and except football. I don't and, know. Well, and run the ball a lot. Yeah. yeah. The more the more I read and hear about what happened today at practice, I think he's I think. Yeah. He's on well, what's the update? What happened at practice? He just threw again for the third straight day. Crisp. Throws. Ooh, Jimmy I'd be nervous either way. It doesn't matter. Were they were they like five yarders or something? Not oh, down the yeah, field. I'm sure. I mean, somebody said. Well, somebody I, said I think there's thirty and a half. to forty five yards in, in the air. You don't even do that in the game, so that doesn't even matter. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It's just like, where's Kittle? Get it to him. Where's Debo? Got it. Um, I hate that we only see you guys once a month, though we understand why, but it's always fun and quite an adventure uh -huh. as uh, we, we bring up some topics that don't really necessarily expect, uh, but it's always <laughs> fun. Uh, Deuce and Mo, uh, they'll be on the call for Stock 